we're now going to move on to the last section of the day. Before I introduce our president, I'd like to say a few words about the Sir Colin Spedding Award, which is made annually in memory of Sir Colin Spedding, the late chairman of the forum, and was agreed by his family. Given the exceptional circumstances of the last year and the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, the National Equine Forum Organising Committee changed the emphasis of the award for 2021 to celebrate those who have gone above and beyond during a very difficult year. Hence the renaming for this year to the special COVID-19 Sir Colin Spedding Award. It will come as no surprise that there cannot be a presentation for the award at this time. The winner will be announced shortly and when it is safe to do so, the presentation will take place. We will let you know when this has been done through our website and social media channels. I'm really delighted that our president, Her Royal Highness, the Princess Royal, has joined us for some of the sessions today, and I would like to thank her for her support during the last year. I would now like to welcome Her Royal Highness, the Princess Royal, to say a few words. Your Royal Highness. Good afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to be able to join you. Um, it, it, there are moments when, in technology when that seems a minor miracle, and I think today has been an astonishing achievement, to which may I congratulate the Chairman, Tim Brigstock, and all those who've made it possible uh, to run the Equine Forum in as, as near as possible to what we would normally expect. Um, but to make it possible at all has been a huge achievement. And this transition uh, to a virtual event has obviously held its own challenges. And I congratulate everybody who's been involved and thank those who've, been, who've joined us for a, a fascinating selection of presentations and discussions and the involvement of so many who've responded to them. I certainly like to uh, reiterate the thanks to the Forum family, which is our sponsors, supporters, corporate friends and friends and they've been we have many long-standing benefactors across all categories and I hope they are also happy that we've been able to run the forum in this format and we'd also like to welcome Mars a question to the forum family this year as new sponsors and I hope that they feel uh, they, that's it's added to their knowledge as, as it's been welcome for us. Can I also say thank you in sort of in a broader context uh, to those in this last very difficult year who've probably uh, prevented what has been a difficult welfare year for charities for horses being a total disaster so for owners of livery yards and riding schools and owners themselves for maintaining uh, their horses and ponies and finding ways of continuing to do so. I know locally that's uh, required people ringing around. I've got one uh, from a local riding school and how the RDA have managed as well. But those organizations who recognized that this was going to be an issue and set up this uh, a system and some funds to make it available to those who are going to be under real pressure. As you say, this time last year, we could never have imagined the kind of pressures that the equestrian fraternity were going to be under uh, and the impact on fundraising and on our ability to respond. But what is hugely encouraging from today is there is so much going on. And I know in a way that's been forced upon us by the changes that are happening, but I think it's been, it's un been underlined today that people have understood that and worked with it and have tried as hard as possible to make sure that as far as the animals are concerned, uh, their lives continue um, pretty well unaltered. Uh, as usual, we're grateful for the, our partners uh, for joining us and for being part of the forums um, every year, in fact, particularly Lord Gardner. I'm delighted that he's been able to join us again and for all his hard work uh, on the behalf of horses through the Agricultural Bill and other areas. It's 
we, we may have said this before, but it's very rare to have continuity in that department. So we really appreciate that. All of our speakers have brought together what the forum thinks is important, which is so many aspects. But you can imagine that when we were putting the program together this year, it's really hard to make a decision on which areas were going to be most important. But I hope you will agree that we've touched on most of those which are at the forefront of issues. COVID has had an effect on literally everybody in every part of life. Uh, and we've had to be able to respond to that. Brexit has had an impact on a lot of us uh, in different ways. And I think we will have to learn how to deal with that. Uh, but so will the businesses that are related to it. I really hope that everybody will begin to learn uh, about what you need to deal with. Well, I'm really struck by the, the processes, of, particularly in, in transport terms, uh, and the amount of paperwork that seems to go with it, that there must be a minimum amount of information that you actually really need in order to ensure that an animal is either safe to transport um, in terms of its medical health, uh, so that you can do so without worrying the countries that they're going to. But my goodness, doesn't information overtake the amount of uh, paperwork that you have to translate it into if you're not careful. Uh, the access to information, if you're not careful, just requires a lot more paperwork to back it up. Uh, that's going to be a battle across the piece, I suspect. I hope, and this is really a, to the retail sector and, the, um, and those who are involved in shows, is that for those businesses and areas who felt they've lost out uh, to competition elsewhere, and particularly on the continent, that will encourage some of our skilled workers to come back to those uh, areas which they were, had been in before, and maybe to grow that part of the business within the UK. That would be really good news for everybody. And hopefully perhaps encourage those in the UK going to shows who might otherwise have felt that in, from an international perspective, they didn't get in. I mentioned that in passing. It's, it, it, we would love to see the events back in place. And uh, I have to say that the fact that they've had to cancel badminton is a real blow. It's a blow because, uh, not least of all with the Olympics coming up, but it's a blow because if the logic is that you cannot make a cross-country uh, venue secure to stop people getting in, it one makes you wonder about how much space you actually need to be able to distance. But these are things that I think we're going to have to be able to try and deal with, and we won't know how we're going to deal with that until later in the year. I hope, too, that if nothing else, the work of so many people here has raised the profile of the equestrian sector in a way that we hadn't really managed to do before. Now, we've got to make sure that we we follow that up so that those connections that have been made and so obviously made, and we've heard particularly the British Horse Council's links and work with the government is maintained so that we can, we can pursue that, we can maintain the profile and the improvements that I think have come as a result of that or will hopefully be very much more obvious in the future. Your sessions in the morning and your second session driven by very different concerns, but nonetheless very important concerns. Uh, I think for those of us who've been in equestrianism pretty well all, all their lives, you don't really think of it as having um, issues like that to deal with because we feel it's very open, not least of all because it's gender neutral. And making us aware of perhaps there are better ways of making it accessible to literally everybody uh, is a good lesson. But being accessible to everybody is always a bit of an issue for the equestrian sector. So I hope it will apply across the board. We need for everybody to understand the benefits of equestrian activity, as I hope that the Riding for Disabled Association has been able to um, evaluate over the years to prove the benefits yes in certain sectors but generally on a much broader basis not just to those who ride within the rda groups 
but to their, their carers and families in, in, a, in a very different way, that it has a real impact of benefit to the community. That is an area which I think we must, we must work on and make sure we get that mix right and the access available. And this afternoon, you've had an interesting mixture of the technology that is becoming available uh, to help us in better diagnosis, uh, better creation of, of equipment that needs to go with horses. I think if we're not careful, we'll all become very neurotic about our abilities to ride, never mind anything else, to stay level which is uh, an issue anyway, but the technology is becoming uh, better at those very difficult issues that horses are different and need to be measured differently so that we get better statistics is, is to be encouraged. And thank you so much to, um, and for our, the safety from the British Horse Society and our, uh, study and to our speakers, particularly to Gaynor, Amy and Sadie for their uh, talk, for telling us their story. I suspect there are a lot of people out there who've had near misses, who have comments on uh, how they've been treated on the roads and indeed how we ought to behave as equestrians on the roads and what we need to protect ourselves. And I've been very encouraged by visits to British Horse Society events uh, to see the enthusiasm from those they go to speak to uh, about the lessons that they're being taught. But it is something that you have to do all the time. It's a constant process, a bit like the comments about when did you last read the highway code? The fact that you pass your test is an achievement. Therefore, you tend to go on um, after that and not refer to it that sort of continuing lesson learning and how it fits in your lives fits everything we do. And being involved with vehicles on the roadside is more of an issue uh, than it was in the past. At the right at the beginning, there was a comment about the COVID and the access to the countryside and how many more people had done that and the impacts of that. That wasn't necessarily motor vehicles because in theory the roads were quieter but it did increase the number of cyclists and road users which produced a slightly different issue. Access will remain uh, a very double-edged sword for those in rural areas and again it is about education. Now the education will vary from place to place I suspect in, in the understanding of the impacts of thoughtless behavior around animals generally and horses in particular, and the issues that can follow on from that. I hope that this sort of event and what the Equine Forum can do is to make sure that we understand all aspects of the, of the impacts on the countryside and that people are prepared to come and talk at an event like this to fill in those blanks to help us see the whole picture. Uh, although we suffer from a one which is very specific to our areas, I think it helps to know that these are issues which affect literally everybody and we can be helped by hearing and talking about it. And I hope you feel that is true as well. I've certainly found today, as always, interesting. As always, I've learnt something. Um, my access to IT doesn't seem to be getting any better as I try to download one of the apps, but we won't worry about that. But we do know that this is an event which can make a difference and it makes a difference because of all of you who join us, who think about it, who ask the questions and go off and talk about it. So thank you very much for being part of today. And as you've heard from Professor Pat Harris in her introduction, the emphasis of the Sir Colin Spedding Award uh, has been adjusted for 2021 to recognize and celebrate those who have gone above and beyond during this very difficult, difficult and different year. So it reflects some of what we've been talking about. So I would like to invite Professor Pat Harris, Vice Chair of the Forum, to read out the citation for the winner for the special COVID-19 Sir Colin Spedding Award. I'm very pleased to be able to announce 
that the special COVID-19 Sir Colin Spedding Award for 2021 is to be presented to Claire Williams in recognition of her tireless work at all hours to advise, support and maintain morale across the equestrian sector during the COVID-19 pandemic. Her efforts included analysis of government guidelines and the development of protocols to allow feed merchants and tax shops selling feed and horse care products to trade legally and to continue with essential safety services such as hat fitting. Without Claire's support, many would have suffered financial hardship and potential loss of livelihood. It was her tenacity and quick thinking that helped to keep many retailers open and the nation's horses fed and cared for. Congratulations, Claire. Your Royal Highness, my Lords, ladies and gentlemen, it now falls on me to close this 29th National Equine Forum. I hope you've in, enjoyed your day, although it's been different, but I think the subject matter that we've covered has been relevant and hopefully been of interest to all of you. I would like to thank our President, Her Royal Highness, for her comments and ongoing support and huge congratulations to Claire Williams um, on winning this special COVID-19 Sir Colin Spedding Award. It's richly deserved and we will let you know the date of the actual presentation, um, presumably later during the year. On the Sir Colin Spedding, nominations for the 22 award will open at the beginning of April. So please go to our website to make a nomination. And don't forget, this is for the unsung heroes who are doing the work uh, that often isn't appreciated, but just do it because of the, their love of animals. Um, you can access to the replay. The replay will go live in a few days for those who are watching live or have a ticket for the live session. You'll receive an email from Eventbrite giving you details of how to access the replay. New attendees will also be able to purchase a ticket for the replay via our website. And if you keep an eye out on our website and social media, we will give you full details. Now at this time, uh, I, it's very appropriate if I thank a number of people. Um, first of all, um, I would reiterate thanks to the Forum family, the sponsors, supporters, corporate friends and friends. Without their help, we could not run this. Secondly, to thank uh, fellow members of the organising committee who actually put it all together and make it happen. And then particularly today to thank those all, uh, if you like, the backroom operations team who have really worked incredibly hard to make this um, uh, so effective. So a particular thanks to Jan Rogers, uh, Aggie Mosakowska, uh, Vicky Kangas, Roly Owers, Debbie Romalis and Beth Maloney. It's a huge, huge thanks, really, because it's gone incredibly well. And I should add to that Mark Rigby, Rigby from Equestrian uh, Pro TV, who's been a star as far as the AV is concerned. And finally, and I'm sure um, you'll all agree with me, if it wasn't for our administrator, Georgina Crossman, this would not work. George puts in a huge amount of work to make sure the forum goes smoothly. And with this year, it, it's been almost uh, double the work that we would normally have when we're back at the IMEC E. So a thank you very much, George, for all you've done. Um, we look forward to seeing you hopefully at IMEC E uh, next uh, March, March the 3rd for the 30th National Equine Forum. Keep safe. And thank you very much for attending.